Welcome to Electron Line. Now let's take a look at the right circular cone. They call it the right circular cone because it's directed straight up from the base. Notice that the, the base is made up of a circle, so the radius of circle equals to r, and the height of the cone equals h, and then we have what we call the slant height, the distance from the edge of the cone here at the bottom to the very top. We're trying to find the volume and the surface area of this cone. Now for the volume, it turns out that it's actually a fraction of the volume of a cylinder that it fits into. The volume of the cylinder would be the area of the base times the height, like we saw in the previous video. And then all we need to do is put a fraction in front of that. Turns out that fraction equals one-third. So it turns out that the volume equals one-third the area of the base, which is pi r squared times the height of the cone. So pi r squared h would be the volume of the cylinder of this height and this width right here. And if we put in a one-third, we get pi r squared h. Now this has always been a mystery to me when I first saw geometry and I first saw this. I always thought it looks more like it should take up about half of the volume, not one-third of the volume. It turns out to see that you really need to use a method called calculus to see that where that one-third comes from. However, I can give you kind of a hint as to why it seems to make sense. Let's say we go to the halfway point from the bottom to the top and we make a little slice through that cylinder and that right circular cone. So we're going to make a little slice like this. When we do that, we end up with basically two little disks. If we ignore the right circular cone and just talk about the cylinder, we get a small little disk like this, where the radius would be equal to r. Now, if we only take into account the cone portion of that, then we end up with a smaller disk, like this, and the radius of that disk would be half the radius of the cylinder. So the radius here would be r over 2. Now, if we calculate the surface area of this little disk, then we can say the surface area here would be pi r squared. And if we take the surface area of this, it would be pi times r over 2 squared, which means it would be pi r squared over 4. And of course, if it then multiply times a little thickness, we would get the volume. So if I make this a small little thickness right here, let's call that small little thickness delta h or dh. And here's a small little thickness here, delta h. You can see that the volume of the disk, the volume would be pi r squared times a small little thickness, and here the volume would be equal to pi r squared over 4 times the little thickness. So you can see that halfway up the cone, a slice of volume of this cone would only be one quarter the volume of the cylinder at that location. So you can see that the very top portion of the cone here makes up a very small volume, a very small portion of the volume of the cylinder. And so you can see that through inference that yes, it would be less than one half the volume. To do real justice for that, we'd actually have to use calculus and we don't want to do that here. Now we want to try to find the surface area of this right circular cone that would be equal to the surface area of the bottom plus the surface area of the side. Again, the way we can figure that out, the surface area at the bottom is, is easy, so let's do that here. So the surface area would be equal to the surface area of the bottom plus the surface area of the side. Now this part is easy. We can find the area at the bottom. That's simply the area of a circle. So we say that this is equal to pi r squared Plus, but how do we find the surface area of the side? Well, we have a little trick. What we can do here is draw a little circle about the middle portion of the cone, like this. And then what we can do is we can imagine that we're going to swing the slanted side all the way around. And notice when I swing it around at the top, I would carry, I would go zero distance, and at the bottom I would cover a distance of 2 pi r, and at the center, I would cover a distance of, well, half of that. Well, let's see what the circumference would be of the slanted side going around at the halfway point. So the circumference 
at the halfway point, I'll call it c sub 1 half, is equal to pi, oh, not pi, is equal to 2 pi times the radius at that spot. And at that spot, the radius would be equal to half the radius at the bottom. So we multiply this times r over 2. And by canceling out the 2's, the circumference at the halfway point is equal to simply pi times r. So imagine taking the side here, the slanted side, and swinging it around an average distance of pi times r. It would be 0 at the top, 2 pi r at the bottom, and the average distance pi r at the center. So the surface area of the side would be equal to the side multiplied times the average distance covered by the side as you swing it around, and that would be the surface area of the right circular cone on the side. Add that to the surface here at the bottom, that gives you pi r squared plus 2 pi times the side. And that is the surface area of the right circular cone, and this would be the volume of the right circular cone. So without using more advanced mathematics, we got a pretty good sense of why these are the correct equations for the volume and the surface area of the right circular cone. And that's how we did that.